Hello everyone, my name is Deborah Cruz and I'm a student at Dr. Max Spring 2014 751 class. Methods and materials for teaching students with behavior disorders. Today we're going to take a closer look at the topic sociograms. Some of you may have heard this topic before and for others it may seem completely foreign. Before we begin, here's a brief overview of the points I will discuss today. First, we'll give a detailed definition of sociograms. We'll introduce the creator of this method and see how it was first used. Next, we'll see different examples of sociograms from very basic to much more complex illustrations. We'll discover the terms used and how the process works. When we return to the second portion of the podcast, we will learn step by step how a sociogram works. We will then use this information to be able to conduct our own sociogram. Afterwards, we'll take a look at sociograms in the classroom. We'll ask ourselves if this is an appropriate activity to perform in any type of classroom. What would be the pros and the cons of using this method? Finally, we'll wrap up the discussion with a quick overview of everything we've learned, and I'll even throw in a special treat at the end with a helpful resource that you can use. So you're going to really want to stick around. Let's start off by asking ourselves, what is a sociogram? A sociogram is a graphic representation of social links that a person has. Sociograms were first developed by social scientist Jacob Levy Marino. He built this illustration as a way to analyze his choices or preferences within a particular group. It is a graphic drawing that plots the structure of interpersonal relations within a particular group situation. A sociogram can be drawn on the basis of many different criteria. These can include lines of communication, social relations, as well as social influences. So you're probably here thinking, okay, Deborah, pretty awesome definition, but how does this actually look when it's taken into practice? I think we may need some illustrations for all of you visual learners out there. In this first illustration, there are seven different parties involved. The lines here are used to represent the different relationships among each other. You'll see a pink square labeled with the letter B. We're going to just go ahead and give this person the name Barbara. Barbara has decided to work with her classmates Alex and Charles. You can see this by the line shown in the illustration. Unfortunately, the two of them don't seem to share the exact same feelings as Barbara as they both selected different partners to work with. The second graph gets a little bit more complex. Here you see more individuals involved, which also means more opportunities to select an assortment of partners to work with. And then the third illustration, wow, um, what exactly just happened here? Okay, let's not get too overwhelmed now. We've witnessed just how intense sociograms can appear. So let's backtrack and take another look at a more simple illustration of a sociogram. Here, we have a group of 10 different individuals. The points in any given sociogram who have different choices are called stars. So in this chart here, this would include people like Emily and Ruben, who have at least three individuals or more looking to work with them. Ruben, Lena, and Kim are all interested in teaming up with Emily for the assignment, while Ruben is a group favorite as Tom, Alex, Emily, and Lewis are all vying for his attention. Those individuals with very few or no choices at all are called isolates. Here we see poor Tom located at the bottom left-hand corner without a soul in sight that's willing to work with him. Hmm. So we know there's a star and what's an isolate in the sociogram. Now what about those individuals who choose to work with each other? They are known to have made a mutual choice. Take a moment to view the mutual lines in this illustration. Good to see that Sean and Maya, Ruben and Emily, Kim and DJ, and a few others are on the same page of wanting to work with one another.